Hello everyone, my name is Anastasia Georgievich and I am here to talk to you guys today a little bit about language acquisition and whether or not it is a case of nature or nurture. Nature versus nurture has been a topic debated for centuries. So many aspects of our lives can be attributed to each, whether it be genetics, temperament, or even something like passion. Language acquisition can be defined as the process by which humans acquire the capacity to perceive and comprehend language, as well as to produce and use the words and sentences to communicate. Essentially, this is referring to how we learn our first language when we are just children. On the surface, it might seem quite easy and simple to allocate language acquisition to a nurture trait, seeing how it is something we learn. Quote unquote learn, I guess. However, Although language acquisition might seem as though it could be fully accredited to nurture, I personally would actually argue that it is in fact a concept of both nature and nurture. Okay, so what is language? Language is something we use so often on a daily basis, and we have used so often for so long on a daily basis, that we really do take it for granted. We also very much take for granted the complications and complexities of learning language. To start off, language has two uses, a productive feature and a receptive feature. Productive language use involves idea generation and the articulation of words and speech. Receptive language use, on the other hand, occurs during comprehension or understanding of words and sentences. As we have learned in class, there are four basic structural components of language. The first is phonology, which is a system of the sound segments that humans use to build up words. Each language has a different set of these segments or phonemes, and children quickly come to recognize and then produce the speech segments that are characteristic of their native language. The second component is semantics. This is the system of meanings that are expressed by words and phrases. In order to serve as a means of communication between people, words must have a shared or conventional meaning. Picking out the correct meaning for each new word is a major learning task for children. As the third component, grammar is a system of rules by which, by which words and phrases are arranged to make meaningful statements. Children need to learn how to use the ordering of words to mark grammatical functions, such as a subject or direct object. And finally, pragmatics. This is the system of patterns that determines how humans can use language in a particular social setting for a particular conversational purpose. Children learn that conversation customarily begin with a greeting, require turn-taking, and concern a shared topic. They come to adjust the content of their communications to match their listeners' interests, knowledge, and language ability. Now that we remind ourselves and have understood and understand all, you know, of this, it really is beyond impressive that we can learn language at such a young age. So, what makes this nurture? This might seem like an easy argument to make, but I think there's more to this than just because it's something we learn. This argument is also known as the emergence argument. Studies show that there are various aspects to communication, such as, such as lexicon, phonology, pragmatics, etc., and everyone has a variety of proficiency levels to each. The reason why this is called the emergence argument is because it claims that the only way to explain these variations in the proficiency levels of these language aspects is that because it is because language learning is essentially just an emergence from multiple sources of support. One of these sources, and arguably the most obvious so source, is that friends and family have a clear influence on language acquisition of babies. At Cornell University, under the Department of Human Development, Dr. Marianella Casola has performed extensive research on the language acquisition of babies. Her studies indicate that language acquisition of babies exponentially accelerates when friends and family constantly utilize repetition and elaboration when speaking to their babies. For example, repeating what the baby says or elaborating on something the baby says. Another point encouraging the nurture notion is the fact that language can be learned through other means than just talking. The best and most well-known example of this is Helen Keller. Although she could not see or hear, through the guidance of her teacher, she learned to communicate through the touch of hand. This is clearly a learned trait. Another reason supporting nurture 
would be one of the most effective ways of learning language is being corrected through error. If a child says something and a parent corrects it, the child is learning and learning quicker, which is difficult to learn correction entirely on your own. Now that we have established that language acquisition is in fact an aspect of nurture, what makes it a nature trait? So although it is easy to attribute language acquisition to nurture, there are arguments that make it very difficult to deny nature's involvement as well. This theory is also known as the special gift position and was founded by linguistic revolutionary Noam Chomsky. He implores that people pay more attention to the nature aspect and provides us many reasons as to why. Firstly, people are empowered by the urge to speak, quote unquote. This is exemplified when children make sounds and try to communicate when they interact with others before they can officially speak. Another reason is because children automatically learn grammatical structure without ever being taught. For example, studies show how children learn to ask questions and change the order of the subject and verb before ever officially being told to do so. Additionally, in our Daniel's 1985 reading titled Nine Ideas About Language, Daniels himself acknowledges, it acknowledges in his very first point, children learn their native language swiftly, efficiently, and largely without instruction. He continues on to say that many linguists even assert that the human brain was pre-wired for language, and some have also postulated that the underlying linguistic features, which are common to all languages, are present in the brain at birth. It makes it quite difficult to deny nature's clear appearance when it comes to language acquisition. As you can see, although language acquisition might seem as though it could be fully credited to nurture, I would actually argue that it is in fact a concept of both nature and nurture. There are plenty of convincing nurture arguments which definitely prove that it is a huge factor in language acquisition. However, Noam Chomsky as well as some of his linguist counterparts have made some points for the nature argument that are pretty difficult to ignore. Therefore, I can confidently say that I fully believe language acquisition is a testament to both nature and nurture. If you agree or disagree, please do not hesitate to share. Thank you very much for your time.